This lecture is specific to Honors Physics AB and AP Physics C. Let's take a look at a detailed SHO kinematics example that incorporates into it a phase shift. Please copy down the following problem. An SHO has a position function that is given by the following. Okay, now I'm using much the same position function here as I've used thus far throughout these lectures for simple harmonic motion kinematics, like so. But notice that I've incorporated here into this function a phase shift. Let's now immediately go ahead and start to read the information from the expression. Okay, once again, the amplitude is given to us as three meters. The angular frequency is pi over four radians per second. Therefore, the period is once again, eight seconds. And then when it comes to the graphing of this function and the other trigonometric functions, here's then how we read the shortcut. First of all, the positive sign here. The positive sign means that we're gonna shift to the left and then we shift by this amount. Okay, now exactly how much is three pi over four radians? Well, here's how I like to calculate this. I think of it in terms of a fraction of a full two pi radians. So how much of two pi radians is this phase shift? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take 3 pi over 4 and divide it by 2 pi. When you do, you end up with 3 eighths. So what I'm going to be doing here from this graph and also the velocity and acceleration graph is I'm going to be shifting those graphs to the left 3 eighths of the way. This is something that can be done by hand. So when you're given a simple phase shift to work with, such as this, something that can be done by hand, I encourage you to shift those functions by hand. Now, of course, if it's a decimal or if it's something that's complicated, if you know how to do phase shift graphing on your calculator, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do so. However, you should become proficient in graphing out phase shifts associated with simple values by hand, and that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Okay, now let's go ahead and graph out the position and then we'll do the same for the velocity and acceleration in just a few moments. Here's how I go about doing this shortcut. What I always do off to the side is I draw for myself what I call a shortcut graph. And in this case, we start with a cosine, like so. And now I'm gonna be shifting this function to the left-hand side, so then therefore I don't have to worry about drawing anything over here. And then I have to figure out where 3 a of the way is. So here's my reasoning, here's how I go about doing this. Okay, here's a full oscillation, think of that as eight eighths. So here's halfway, that's four eighths. Here's a quarter of the way, so that's two eighths. So this is two eighths and this is four eighths, and three eighths is maybe about right here, like so. So then therefore what I do is I take the function and I shift it like so to the left-hand side until this point here lies along the vertical axis. And that's then where I start my graph. Okay, so now doing this all by hand, time in seconds, position in terms of meters, and now I start my drawing with that point on the vertical axis. Start, stop, in the same position like so, graphing out one full oscillation. So right here at this moment in time, this is the period of eight seconds, and then this point up here is the amplitude of positive three meters, and then down here, this is negative three meters, like so. So that's how you can start to quickly do these phase shifts by hand. Basically, you figure out how much of two pi is the phase angle, and then go from there. Let me do this same process for the other two functions. Okay, so next we have the velocity equation. The velocity is a function of time, so take a derivative, negative three pi over four, sine of pi over four, it's pi over four, excuse me, times t, and then once again, plus the three pi over four phase shift in terms of meters per second. So now I'm gonna draw this. In order to do so, I draw for myself first a little shortcut graph. So in this case, I graph a negative sine curve for my shortcut graph, which looks like this. And then once again, I have to figure out where 3 eighths of the way is and then shift the whole thing to the left-hand side. So here's my process for doing so. Right here is a full oscillation, so that's 8 eighths. Here's halfway, that's 4 eighths. Here's a quarter of the way, that's 2 eighths. 
So then therefore about right there, that point right there, if I shift it to the left-hand side, this is three eighths of the way. That's a shift then in terms of angle of three pi over four radians, much like it was up on the top board. So now I start my drawing for the velocity graph with this point right here on the vertical axis. That then looks like this. Okay, so time in seconds, and now this is velocity in terms of meters per second, and now I start my curve with this point here on the vertical axis. So start, stop, like so for one full oscillation, right here is the period of eight seconds, and then this point up here is the coefficient three pi over four meters per second, and then not this point, but this point down here, like so, this is negative three pi over four meters per second, like so. Once again, that's how you can do this quickly by hand. And then I'll do the same thing then, lastly, with the acceleration graph. So first of all, get the function, just take another derivative. That then gives us this. Like so, in terms of meters per second squared. And now what I have to do is take a negative cosine curve and shift that. Once again, I draw for myself here a little shortcut graph. Okay, so now I graph on a negative cosine curve like so. And then I have to shift it 3 eighths of the way to the left-hand side. So then therefore, right here is a full oscillation, so 8 eighths. Here's half, so that's 4 eighths. Here's a quarter away, that's 2 eighths. So 3 eighths is about right there. So I take this point right here and shift it until it's on the axis. When I do, I'm shifting by three pi over four radians. And then we draw the following. Okay, so time in seconds, acceleration in meters per second squared. And now I start my drawing with this point here on the vertical axis. So start, stop, like so in the same position. So then therefore I've graphed out here one full period. This right here is the time of eight seconds. And then up here is the maximum acceleration as a positive value, like so. And then down here, the negative value, like so. Okay, now at this point, you can kind of pause and check yourself in the following manner. Take a look at the position graph up here, and now compare it to the acceleration graph right here. Notice that this is just the negative of this. And the reason for that is because the position is a cosine curve, and the acceleration is a negative cosine curve. So the two graphs will always be negatives for that reason, regardless of what the phase shift is, okay? Okay, now let's get to the remainder of the problem, which is pretty similar to examples that we've already seen. Let me move my file. Okay, so let's jump up to here. Let's get rid of this stuff that we don't need now. Okay, and it now says the following. When is the oscillator at a position of x equals positive two meters? And then find the velocities and accelerations at those times and then mark the times on all three graphs. This process, as you'll see, is a little bit more involved than it was earlier without a phase shift. Okay, now the position is two meters. So a position of two meters is about right here. So then therefore we're asked to find this time here in this time here. We're not gonna be able to use a simple symmetry argument to do so. But let's go ahead and find the first time. We'll do so by taking the function x, setting it equal to two, and then solving for the time t. Okay, so doing so, let's go ahead and run through that process here. Okay, so first of all, we divide by three and then take the inverse cosine of both sides. So, and then in radian mode on my calculator, I'll run through the remainder of the algebra here and get this time t. All right, so on the left-hand side, I have, first of all, the inverse cosine of two-thirds. And then I'm going to subtract three pi over four. And then I'll cross-multiply the four and the pi over. Like so. And what I do, here's what pops up on my calculator display. I'm going to call this T1. This is negative 1.93 seconds. 
Now, the negative sign merely means that instead of being on the right-hand side of the vertical axis, I'm instead over here on the left-hand side. So then, therefore, what should I add to that number to get over here to the right-hand side? Not to two pi radians. This is time in seconds. Instead, add a full period. So let's now go ahead and add eight seconds to that. So add eight, and this comes out to be a time of 6.07 seconds, like so. Now, 6.07 seconds. Is that this time here, or is it this time here? It's probably this one here, but I'm not exactly certain. And the reason for that is because of the asymmetry of this graph when we have, once again, taken into account a phase shift. In addition to that, another difficulty is that I can't use a simple symmetry argument to find the second time. So then therefore, what do I do at this point? Well, let's go ahead and find the second time. And in order to do so, we're gonna take into account the fact that the cosine is an even function. Remember what that means from the unit circle. It means that the cosine of an angle and the cosine of a negative angle are the same thing. Think of the angle as being in the first quadrant, and then therefore the negative angle is in the fourth quadrant on the unit circle. Recall that the cosine of those two angles is the same value. So then therefore, here's what we do. Cosine of theta equals cosine of negative theta. I go back to this step here, and I think of this entire argument of the cosine function as the angle theta. And now what I do is I make it negative. I distribute a negative sign through, and then we solve for the second time. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that process here. So notice the negative sign that I'm distributing through the function like so, and now I'll just do the remainder of the algebra here in my calculator and solve for that second time t. So divide by three, take the inverse cosine of both sides. I'm doing that process. Then I'm going to add 3 pi over 4 to the other side. And then cross multiply with this negative sign times 4, and then divided by negative pi. And then after I do this process, here's the time that I get on my calculator display. It's negative 4.07 seconds. So then therefore, I'm going to add 8 seconds to it to get to the right-hand side of the axis. So plus 8, and this comes out to be 3.93 seconds. Okay, now I can easily identify which time is which. Pretty obviously, this is actually the second time, T2, and this right here is the first time, T1. Once again, in order to find the second time, you have to take advantage of the even aspect of the cosine function in order to get that second time. You can't use a simple symmetry argument to find it. You must do the following. Okay, now let's get to the bottom board and check out the velocities and accelerations at these two times and then mark their positions correctly on their graphs. Okay, so let's do the velocity function first. So we're gonna find a V of 6.07 and we're gonna find V of 3.93. Okay, so in radian mode on my calculator, I just plug in. So negative three times pi over four times the sine of pi over four times 6.07 plus three times pi over four. And that comes out to be negative 1.76. Okay, now I should get positive 1.76 meters per second for the second time. So negative three times pi over four times sine pi over four times 3.93 plus three times pi over four. And sure enough, I got positive 1.76 meters per second. So if you get to this step here, and the two numbers are the same of several decimal spaces, you've done the problem correctly. Okay, now that I've got those times and I've got these velocities, let's go ahead and mark them here correctly. So first of all, neg or excuse me, positive 1.76 meters per second. Let's do that time first. So 1.76, we'll say, is about right there. So then therefore, is the time of 3.93 seconds here on the left or is it here on the right? It's here on the right. It's this point right here. This is our time, T2. The reason for that is as follows. In this problem, we're given that the position is a positive number, two meters. Therefore, the spring force, and then therefore the acceleration, which is always back towards equilibrium, is a negative number. Notice that right here at this point, the slope of the tangent line, which is the acceleration, is a negative number. That wouldn't be the case over here. 
Similarly for the other value, negative 1.76 meters per second, say down here somewhere. So then therefore, is it this point here or is it this point here? That's the time of 6.07 seconds. It's this point here. This is the time T1 and it's that point for the same reason. Right here at this point, notice that we have a negative slope for the acceleration, just as we did right here for T2. Marking these two times correctly on this velocity graph is usually the hardest part of this problem. And now let's go ahead and finish the example by taking a look at the acceleration at these two times. This is usually easy to do. So we're going to find the acceleration at 6.07 and the acceleration at 3.93. What I should get is the same negative number for both. So let's see what happens when I plug in. So negative three times pi squared over 16 times cosine of pi over four times, we'll do 6.07 first, plus three times pi over four. And this ends up to be negative 1.23 about meters per second squared. Now I should get the same negative number for the other time. Let's see if I do. So negative three times pi squared over 16 times cosine pi over four. Uh, times 3.93 plus 3 times pi over 4 quantity, and sure enough, I get the same value, negative 1.23 meters per second squared. So negative 1.23 is down here somewhere. So then therefore right here and here are the times T2 and T1 respectively, like so. Usually the acceleration graph is easy to deal with. Once again, notice that the acceleration graph is basically just the negative of the position graph on the top board. Okay, that completes the kinematics of simple harmonic motion.